it's kind of like a puzzle. Like it all kind of ties back in around and then all the puzzle pieces fall into place. Even with this whole conversation that we've been talking about. Like it all has to do with perspective, how you interpret things, and your thought process. And so if you're like a genuine good person down to your core, and you encounter somebody who's also a genuine good person down to their core, the thought process might be a little bit different, or the interpretation might be a little bit different, but you'll kind of see things the same way. Mm. And it's like a deep understanding, mm. which is like going back to the sports thing and the advice, see, it all ties in, like it all relates. But going back to the sports thing and the advice thing, that's why you gotta consider where it's coming from. And it's the same thing with trust because you don't have to be somebody's absolute best friend, tell them everything. Because nine times out of 10, these people don't know you and they're gonna make assumptions based off of what's going on in their own life and how they perceive you. Mm -hmm. So kind of like how you were saying, if somebody doesn't like you, you can tell them where to go. But <laughs> I'm just saying, that's a little bit more of an aggressive way that you put it. <laughs> you can tell them where to go. You can tell them, I'm not saying you do that. That's not how you're gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> go to 7-Eleven. That doesn't tell them. I wasn't trying to say the actual term, you know? No, I thought of the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought of, I thought of the gas station. Um, <laughs> that doesn't tell you exactly how my mind works. No, you're probably a visual thinker then. No, I'm very, very much a visual thinker. That's me too. Very like, visual. That's, that's me too. That's why I can't, like, there's certain conversations that I'm not able to have unless I actually put myself in a mindset yeah. so I'm ready to have it. Because no, I was thinking it. Yeah, if I, this might be not necessarily visual, but if we're having a conversation and you're asking me something or you're talking to me, I can almost see the subtitles of what you're saying. Oh. Really? You I, too? I, I want to say subtitles. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Like, I can see, it's like, the words that you're saying is, like, subtitles coming out. So wow. I can, like, visually That's cool. read it almost before it. Not, like, actually, but, you know. No, I know what you like, mean. That's still yeah, cool, though. Being, getting more consistent with posting on TikTok, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of something that I had seen like other creatives, photographers, videographers do, and that's where I get a lot of my ideas from. But one thing that I found to kind of remember to stay in the creative process and enjoying it, like doing it because I enjoy it, not because I want to reach a certain audience almost, mm -hmm. is kind of remembering to, remembering to be obsessed with my own life. Mm -hmm. So I go back, and rewatch my own TikToks all the time because it's like little memories for me. So being obsessed with your own life and the stuff that you're doing in your life is kind of the way I think of at least to know I'm on the right track. Right. No matter what advice I'm getting, anything like that, if I'm still obsessed with my own life, watching my own content as if I was some famous influencer, like I like what I'm watching of myself and that's not just like from a bias being like oh yeah like this is a good a good tiktok that i made it's you no know, like i was so happy in those memories of re-watching it and being obsessed with my own life is kind of how i relate back to being like okay this is how i stay grounded this is how i know like keep doing what i'm doing because the opportunities the stuff like that like will follow that because i'm just doing what i'm what i like to do what i'm doing I'm not doing it to play someone else get to a certain point or whatever to make somebody else happy it's just because I enjoy doing it so mm -hmm. but I just wanted to touch on that because being obsessed with your own life is important because if you don't like what you're doing nobody else is going to like what you're mm -hmm. doing so gotta love yourself Chosen love yourself. yourself love your life and you can support others while doing that too it's not just being like oh like my life is better like mm -hmm. that's not what I'm saying not at all right cool so love yeah. your life that's big. That yeah, is actually huge. Your life and what you're doing in that moment, while showcasing it through social media, mm -hmm. is is like kind of a cool way to just remember it. That's how I think of it, at least. Exactly. So, it is. That's my two cents. That is the like, and man, I'm. You're taking me back only because I didn't know that I knew a lot about social media mm -hmm. and obviously when it's like emerging and you know how technology continues to grow certain generations look at social media in a different light oh yeah so when you hear maybe the older generation or the generation that's above you always ridicule or kind of fun of our generation mm -hmm. for 
growing up with this, well, on it too much, or this and that, blah, 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 whatever. But paying attention to it from a certain age and understanding it, understanding how these different tools work and knowing how they're supposed to work originally mm -hmm. and how you can utilize it and telling someone else how they can benefit it or benefit off of like it. Bouncing ideas off of each other almost mm -hmm. silently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I realizing literally that you can help somebody else just by simply living your own life. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. No, like you said, just post it. Yeah. Cause I posted one TikTok, um, and it was just a TikTok of little videos and stuff that I had taken here and there of my camera, like in my hands. I wasn't in it, it wasn't any photo content, it was literally just the camera. Mm. And I got three emails from three different people to my photography email account asking what type of photo or what type of lens I had used, what type of batteries, like what my favorite SD card is, like stuff like that. And I kind of was just like, oh my gosh, I remember when I was in like high school and stuff and I would email these people who, like these obviously huge influencers mm. and stuff. And I'd be like, what's this? Like, oh, I know I'm not going to get a response. So even me, just like those little things, like those people reaching out, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I made an influence on somebody mm -hmm. else's life. In some sort of, no matter how minor, in somebody's world, mm -hmm. they thought it was important enough to them to ask me that question. So I'm going to give them my most genuine response. Hey, I'm so-and-so. Here's what I use this for. This is mm -hmm. what I like best for it. These are my settings, like whatever. Because when I was first getting started, I had no, like nobody, nobody around me knew anything about it. Mm. So it was kind of, and even now still, I'm kind of now having to learn the specifics of my own camera. Like, I know that if I push a certain bus button or if I turn this a certain way, it does this. But I'm learning now that there's like specific terms and things like that for this. So when people ask me about it, I'm like, okay, mm. let me give you the advice that I did not receive mm. when I was in that position. Because like you just bounce off of each other so in that way, it's kind of like using my TikTok for my own life that I'm obsessed with to show other people, like, it doesn't matter what level you're at, like, you can still turn it into something exactly. fun and well, influence somebody else in a positive way. Yeah. That's part of Ava. Like, Thanks. Eve, that in my head, I'm like, yeah! <laughs> I'm like, well, that's like amazing. This. Man, thank God. Sheesh. Like, you're... Yeah. One, I'm... I'm already fascinated once to learn more about you in general and two you are speaking so powerfully thank you and i'm like from also knowing doesn't happen very often <laughs> 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 i try my best <laughs> but from even bringing up the moment of when you first started working in the department yeah and to watch you now and just like knowing your perspective understanding and seeing how you see things Keep like good job. Like, thank keep, you. Keep going. Oh, like, thank man. you. Um, I'm just like that. That helped me too, because I'm not that like familiar with TikTok myself. Yeah. So to hear that, I'm like, okay, I'm really gonna take that now and go off. And, like, yeah. what else can I? What else do I love about my life that I could possibly share? Yeah. So, so thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Of course. And even if it doesn't, because I have like 100 followers, and that's literally it. And most of them is people that I know. Mm. So, just watching, like, the most recent TikTok that I made about going with the lightning and Sparty and all that stuff, doing that, I took so many little videos that night. Having it in mind for TikTok, and the TikTok got maybe 300 views. I watch it at least once a day because I'm like, that was so fun. It was such a fun night. Like, mm. this is what I want my life to look like at a certain point when I get there. Mm. So, it's kind of like a being obsessed with your own life and a motivator mm. to kind of be like, okay, it's hard now, like waking up early, doing all these things, studying this hard, getting the grades, meeting all these people, whatever. But kind of watching that through my own TikTok is kind of like, all right, here's what my life is going to look like if I keep doing this, you know? So, I don't know. It's keep just, going. Keep with TikTok, going. I like it specifically because it's so easy to go back and rewatch my own stuff that I've already made, mm. that it's, that's just why I like TikTok. Yeah. And I feel like TikTok is so huge, like everybody's on TikTok, yeah. that it's kind of like, <laughs> it's like the mini version of like watching YouTubers. Cause like when I was little, we used to watch the YouTubers. YouTubers. Like those are the influencers, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now it's all on TikTok because of people's short attention span. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's all on TikTok. Big work. So it's kind of <laughs> like you can just do it for yourself. Cause I don't really do it to 
get my name out there or anything. Yeah. Like, that would be nice if it did. But I'm not doing it to get TikTok famous. Like, mm. that's not the goal. If I could make money off of it, like, that would be fine. But I'm going to continue to do it whether I make money off of it or not. Or whether I reach a huge following or not. Because mm. I enjoy it. You know? So. Yeah. Me, on the other hand. Him, <coughs> on the other hand. I'm kidding. So, at first, I would like to obviously have more eyes. But I don't of course. want the eyes for the exactly for the exact right. purpose. I would like to reach people. Yeah. Like so I, I what I try to do now, especially with that, by the help of Myron Golden and the advice that he's given to many thousands of people, I'm trying to set up my content in a way to where even if you were to look at something that I posted years ago, it could still impact somebody. Like I don't want it just to be yeah. something that's like of the moment to be of the relevant moment. I want it to be right. like pieces of information that I can continue to help whoever, whenever. At That's also time. why I like TikTok, because mm -hmm. depending on like the algorithms and what people are into and all that stuff, certain things will come up. It doesn't necessarily come up in the order that you post or whatever. But it, they could see videos from three years ago, mm -hmm. and if it's the same message or stuff like that, like it'll even if it was posted three years ago, if it's something that resonates with that person, they're gonna remember it. Okay. So, dog. Yeah. Ava's been fine. Ooh. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm mentally on the mountaintop. No. I think we're on a good. Like this was a perfect day to like. We're on a good roll. Roll. I feel like yes. Yeah. One of my close friends was telling me that. Um. One of my close friends was telling me that. Sometimes. If you're trying to tell a room of people something, the only thing that matters is if one person heard it, if you impacted one person. Because at one point in our lives, we were also that one person. So if it impacts somebody's life in a way that definitely helped them, they mean something. Yeah. So. I think that's huge because even still, like now, obviously, like first starting, especially in sports and media and stuff like that. I was the one person in the room, nine times out of ten that was reached. And even still now, like, there are a lot of topics or things that I'll relate to, and I'm like, okay, I am the one person that's being reached. So when I'm kind of pushing out my own stuff or doing certain things like that, if there's one person that, we may have already talked about this, but if there's that one person that reaches out to me or that I end up, like, touching with that like whatever advice I'm giving. Mm. That to me is so cool because I'm, I was very appreciative of the people that would take their time to answer me when I had those questions. So it's almost like now being in the reverse role, getting asked those questions is super exciting to me because it's like, I'm, it's going somewhere, it's reaching somewhere. Even if it doesn't reach anywhere, to me it's, I still enjoy what I'm doing so I'm not gonna quit doing it mm. just because I'm not receiving any feedback. Because a lot of times the people you do reach is just silent, like you won't, hear things, especially on social media, like TikTok, stuff like that. But when you do have like one or two people that are like, oh, hey, like, I saw your video, this is really cool. How'd you get involved? Like, that to me is like, okay, I made an influence on this person. Maybe this could potentially like drive what they would do like mm. in the future, what career paths they're gonna choose and stuff. Cause I was that one person at one point, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, man, I, I have a picture of myself when I was six, and I don't have I don't have many pictures of myself when I was little. But my parents do, but there's a specific photo that I always look at that I like, and I try to always tell myself, especially for me when I struggle with sometimes not feeling hurt. I always tell myself, I uh, like do it for that little kid, do it for that kid. And I know at one point I was that kid that wanted to either be inspired or saw something, and I was like. I know I could do that. I know I could be that. Or like, you know, watching certain yeah. people accept awards and they're like, never stop chasing your dreams and all that. I'm like, I, I hear you. I won't yeah. know. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. That's how I see it. Like, I'm always know? the person that believes that. It's like, be all you can be. Like, do all this stuff. Like, I'm definitely, like, it reaches me. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I get it. Especially yeah. on the, like the you versus you. Yeah. Um, me versus me the whole way from start to finish. Yeah. Have your own style, be genuine. It's you versus you. It's not me versus you. Mm. It's not you versus another person. It's not mm. me versus that person. It's 
I'm mm -hmm. running my own race at my own pace. Mm -hmm. I'll get there when I get there. You get there when you get there. Don't tell me I can't do it, mm -hmm. you know, because... Nope. It's going to add fuse to the fire. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's just going to make me run faster. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take more pictures. You're going to be like... Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, it was... I can't... I honestly cannot remember who said it, but... Oh, I will not remember the person, but I remember the analogy. They're saying most times in life, we're like bugs. And if you can think of bugs in a jar, sometimes the jar shakes. And all the bugs look at each other and blame each other for the jar shaking. Instead of asking if you're okay. And not focusing on, you know, like who's in there with you. But realizing you're in there together. So you can't change the predicament of the jar shaking. You can only help the people that are in the jar with you. I was like, dang, like, that's kind of crazy to look at it. I've seen something similar to that. Yeah. It was, I think, the one that I saw was saying, like, instead of blaming each other for shaking the jar, work together to try to figure out who really shook the jar. Nope. Like, looking outside mm -hmm. of what's inside. So, it, like, same concept, something mm -hmm. similar. So I think that, that is huge, especially in sports, yep. because a lot of times there is, like, an unspoken competition but immediately, almost, you can tell who has the me versus me mindset or who mm -hmm. has the me versus you mindset. You definitely Because in the end, like, it is a competition to see who's going to get to where they're going to get to. But either way, what I'm going to be doing 20 years from now is already written out of what's going to happen. Hence the, that's where that comes from, the already written. Because oh. I did not see anything from yeah. my angle. I'm like, what are you oh. doing? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Had to rotate the leg. That's what I think <laughs> for me. But it's like, well, I'm going to be doing 20, 30 years from now. It's already going to happen. Mm. I'm going to still need to make the choices now mm -hmm. to do what I need to do to get there. But that doesn't mean that I need to push somebody else down in order to get myself mm. up there. Mm. Whether that's to the top, to a minor league, to a major league, whatever. Mm. But it's very, like, to me at least, I'm starting to be able to tell the difference between people who have a me versus me mindset or a me versus you mindset. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Ego is actually nuts. So that same quote, I didn't want to go too into in depth, but the this whole. This is all about going. We've been going yeah, in we've been going deep in. the whole time. So that, might as well. that reference was part of a sermon, and it was the whole point of the person shaking of the jar is the enemy. Right. And our common enemy in a Christian sense, or Christians obviously believe in. I won't even go that. I'll probably cut that part out. Well, let's restart. Okay. <laughs> that phrase actually came from a sermon. Mm -hmm. um, the person that was shaking the jar is our common enemy, the devil, Satan. And so, looking at it in that light, everyone else that's in the jar, that's in this world, we're not really each other's enemy, but because that jar keeps shaking, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, that can happen bad. Life is very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. We look at each other, point fingers, and blame each other, or put each other down, because it's kind of part of human nature. But that's kind of the point. If you can look past that and try to help each other, knowing that... Big picture. Big picture. It's in front of our face. Because nine times out of ten it is. It is. Like, you don't have to kind of dumb it down a little bit. It's like you don't have to be looking like the bigger question, what's my purpose, what am I supposed to be doing, who shook the jar, things like that, instead of looking like, okay, here's our situation, mm -hmm. here's what happened, deal with it. Mm -hmm. Instead of, he said, she said, you did, mm -hmm. I saw this, whatever, it's no, no, no. Common, common goal, mm -hmm. like going forward almost, I think. I don't remember why I for breakfast three keep days ago. Don't like questions for the long term. It's you can ask any of my friends, my roommate, best friend, that <laughs> all of them will tell you. If it was a superlative, worst memory. Horrible memory. Don't know why. This the sponge is full. Like I can't absorb the sponge anything. Is full. I can't absorb anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in the room, you're like, oh yeah, I have a question I want to ask you about mm -hmm. this. There's a Rocky poster on my fridge. Mm -hmm. Um how did you become to like the rock, Rocky series? You did? Oh, oh, shoot! That's we right. watched Creed. 
Because we watched, we watched Creed 3. I didn't even think of that. I'm we not watched, lie to you. So we were in this order. We watched so Creed God, 3. Up, you're right. We watched Creed 2. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I was invested, so we had to watch Creed 1. And then recently, I was on a trip with my brother to a baseball tournament, and his we went with one of his teammates. Mm -hmm. And her, like, his mom brought us. So we all stayed together. And she was like, we have to watch Rocky 4, we have to watch Rocky 4. And we were like, we've never seen, I said, I've seen all, like, all of Creed. So I've never seen any like one, three, four Rocky at all. She's like, we're watching Rocky four. Like, can we start with one? Nope, four. So we watched Rocky four. Then after the tournament, we got home and Jack and I were like invested, mm -hmm. my brother Jack. So we watched one, two, three, and four. Got my whole family involved. The whole family watched one, two, three, and four. We all loved it. Dang, so, they, you yeah. got the family moment? We got the family, because Jack and I were like, it's so good. The first one was kind of, since it was like, yeah, of course, like the first up. one's a little bit different, it's but very old. so good. And the first one is what the poster's from. I'm mm. pretty short. Um, I'm yeah, taking so a picture what, of that. Yeah. Because you know what's actually wild? I'm going to say a lot and I'm going to skip over a lot of details, but just remember that picture. Okay. 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 So. It's the. Uh huh. This is why. This is why I like Rocky. Okay. In general. But just okay. remember that photo. So first I got into Creed. Okay. And so obviously knowing the Rocky Balboa legacy already, mm -hmm. I already knew it was part of the Rocky uh, series. So watching Creed, knowing Michael B. Jordan, knowing the director of Creed, Ryan Coogler obviously, me being a movie person and being very appreciative of black creatives, creators in general, film, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Philly, like the culture, boxing, the sport, all of it. But just the, the developmental side of the character of Adonis, mm -hmm. the son of Apollo, was very relatable. And his character obviously dealt with anger for certain reasons. So did I in life in general. So the fact that it's someone that is dealing with something outside of the ring, the way that he deals with it will also correlate to inside of the ring. And obviously, in the bigger picture, the grand scheme of things, the best fighter is never angry. So he usually goes into his fights already upset because people that already want to fight him only want to fight him because of his father's legacy, who he's never got a chance to meet. So it's just like watching someone battle something that he can't already control. But the only thing that he can't control is what goes on in that ring and up there. So, just watching him go through that impacted me a lot. Attitude is free. <laughs> to where, now going back and watching Rocky, watching him always do this after fights. There's a moment where I, was, <laughs> where I was on a pier, and I saw myself doing this, and the shadow came in like, it was on the, uh, in the water. It was just like a crazy moment for me, because a lot was going on in my life. But it was like a very, very high moment in my life to where when I saw that, all I thought about was this. Like, this is the reason why you persevere. And the, obviously the famous Rocky quote, it's not about how many times you can get hit. It's about how many times you can, about how many, what was it? You can take the hit to keep going. That's like how winning that is that. done. Exactly. That's how winning is done. So I'm yeah. like, watching those movies to me. It obviously makes me feel like the character, just the character itself. Not Michael B. Jordan, the right. character. Right, right. This person is always getting beat down by things that he can't control. And of course, because he can't control it, he gets real frustrated. So of course, the frustration correlates to his sport. So if he can't control that, it's just going to keep pouring out on other people. How does he get through it? And then they show you. And it's just very motivating. And it comes back to me. It's like, oh, I can do the same thing. Yeah. You know, there's hope for me. So. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm very invested and attached oh, to I the Oh, I love movies. that. Okay, cool. You know? So it's just like... I didn't realize it had like that. Yes. Even when we watched it, because that was a while ago mm -hmm. that we did that. That's when why we I watched love the movie. You, me, and Isaiah, mm -hmm. when we watched those movies. I had no idea that it had like that kind of a... Crazy. Thing and so I was when I say, this is why I like this movie. Yeah. Without saying it, someone else is just going to be like... They have bad acting in it. Well, I'm like, they have no clue why. Yeah, I'm, you know, so it's like, that's always. okay. I completely obviously understand. But there's certain movies that I obviously like because it means a lot to me for certain reasons. Yeah. 
then there's obviously movies that I like because I appreciate whoever. And that's like the interpretation created. thing too, because Boom. I just saw it and I was like, oh, this is a cool movie. Like I never thought about it from this perspective before. Like seeing all these things that go into it, especially never seeing Rocky and watching Creed backwards. Mm. That I'm definitely the skip to the last chapter, read ahead type of person. So watching the end of it first, to me was like I didn't even see it. And to me, I was like, oh, this is a great movie. Mm-hmm. Like this is a really good movie. I didn't think about it like in the same, like a deeper meaning or anything and yeah. I think that's kind of how it's important with interpretation because we saw the same thing didn't see it the same way. My uncle who just recently passed had stage 4 colon cancer for 5 years and then recently found out that he had cancer just all over and I actually have a hoodie of his that I brought back down with me from New York and on it it says attitude is free. And he was huge into, doesn't matter what you're going through physically, personally, spiritually, anything, how you conduct yourself and how you approach a situation and controlling your attitude, your frustration, your anger is huge and it kind of determines like anything that you go through. So I feel like that's kind of a good, not to like talk over um, what you were talking about, but Attitude is so important, and no matter what you do, whether it's boxing, spiritually, creatively, mm. like in sickness, like no matter what it is, your attitude truly will get you, like, the distance. Not mm-hmm. to like to tie it back all into um, Rocky and Creek. If you have the right attitude, you can go to the distance. Because if you say you can't do it, then you won't. You but won't. if you say that you can. Mm-hmm. you'll kick cancer spot mm-hmm. for six years, you know? So wow. it's just kind of one of those things, like, wow. attitude is completely free. And kindness is free as well. So free how well. you present yourself to people around you, I think, is huge. a huge, huge thing. Because it's bigger, it's bigger than just you or me and or the one person in the room that it reaches, because that one person could be the difference between sending out a message mm-hmm. like through Rocky or Creator, Supernatural or Once Upon a Time, like any of those things that we've talked about, that one person was inspired enough to do that. So it all came from one person at some point. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's we crazy. just went down no, no, but because like just simply look look at Rocky. From before not knowing the Rocky story. I have story. to put, like a cut of like the and photo. I don't know what it looks like. Put it. <laughs> and I still have the photo of when I was like this yeah. at the pier. But um, I didn't know all that Rocky went through. Well, looking at Creed, at first you're just like, oh, Rocky Bobo is just this great boxer. Right. I didn't know his story either until I yeah. watched the movie. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Comes from nothing, determination, had nothing. Nobody believed Crazy. in him. So it's kind of obviously a movie. But the story came from somewhere. Story came so it's like if I'm coming from something with a huge support system, all these creative people around me, the world at my fingertips mm-hmm. through social media and Google and all that stuff, I can do it too. You, you know, you can do it too. See, that's you what guys, you can do it too. And that's what that, that see that picture right there. <laughs> that's what that's. About. That's where my head always goes to where these moments happen. He's like, I can do it too. I'm like, yeah, yes, I can. Like, yes. I just, I just, in my head, that's just, yeah. that's just where I go. I'm like, yes, I can. And that's just, that's the feeling. That feeling is what I want to put to other people. And I know I say I, but I know that some other people have moments like this to where they feel like that in their own way. Yeah. You know, and like, if I can do that too, that's, that's what I would just love to I, do. I can't wait to have like my Rocky moment. Like, yo, Adrian, I did it. You know, <laughs> like. Yeah. That sounds stupid. No, 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 no. That makes perfect sense. But can't wait to have the Rocky moment because yeah. it's something that, and I feel like you can have more than one mm-hmm. Rocky moment. You can have more than one moment where you're mm-hmm. standing at the top of the pier going. Yep, like that's all, oh, man. Just proving to yourself that you can do something that you didn't think you would be able to do because mm-hmm. it's yeah. in the long run it's me versus me. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Oof. Isn't that off? Oh. I had no idea that that was like that for you though. That's yeah, so see? cool. Because like, and this is, well, one, not really why I started it, but obviously mm-hmm. 
I'm able to obviously be more of myself with this because people obviously see this in a more professional yes. setting. Yeah. But if I'm just having a regular conversation like this is what Rocky meant to me, most people aren't listening. Most people honestly don't care. Like that's okay. Yeah. But if I'm here sitting like this, creating content off of my own camera on my own platform, someone else is gonna see this and be like, Oh my goodness. Like to exactly how you said. Yeah. The I one person. Too. The one person. And not just to make me feel good about that, but other people did it for me. Right. Not directly to me. No. But you know, in that same exact sense. So that I feel like that's part of my due diligence as a creative. I feel like there's um And a person. In one of my classes right now we're reading the book Go Giver. And what we're talking about right now, like in the I think we're on like chapter six or something. But um there's one phrase that's like the key to success is to give. And at first I kinda was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like the key to success is doing what you like to do no matter what other people think, all this stuff, and that is part of it that is important, but it's all about what you can give back to others, and I don't think I really understood it until this conversation, which is why I bring it up. Oh, wow. Because, like, even you saying that, like, you're doing this just to reach back out to that one person in the room who may be listening, or to whoever you think that your experiences could help with. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing. It's like you're not in it to have the money, the glory, the anything like that, you're in it to give back to everybody else. And I feel like that's, that message has kind of been lost as time goes, mm -hmm. which is why it's important to bring it back up mm -hmm. um, and just talk about it. But- You, you know where I got that from? Where? Great. Take, take a guess. Great. There's, there's an example that we both follow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> that came out. I love you. Oh, uh, <laughs> the tacos. There's an example that we both follow mm -hmm. that tells us how to treat people. There's a way that we should treat people. Do you know what I'm getting at at all? Oh yeah, I'm I'm picking up what your friend got. I think exactly. But yeah, so it's just yeah. Kind of lost my train of thought a little bit. Oh, you good? See, goldfish memory. <laughs> but um, the um, it's okay. Oh, the what is it? Gold giver? Go giver? Oh, go giver. Go giver. The Basically, like, the key to success is to give back and give to others, and success can be defined differently. Like, right now, I would say, with my own platforms and my foot, simply from a photography standpoint, I feel successful. Am I making money for it? Am I doing stuff that typically in a career considers you successful? No. Mm -hmm. I don't have a huge following. I'm not making tons of money for it. I, in the fall at least, don't have constant photography things going on. But I would consider myself successful in that I'm fulfilled in mm. what that I'm currently mm. doing. And the stuff that I'm showing, which isn't necessarily giving back to people in the same way you are, which is phenomenal and huge inspiration for that. So, but it's, I'm fulfilled and I'm content in with what I'm doing now, which tells me that I'm in the right place. Mm -hmm. So, and like I said earlier, if the money comes along with it, obviously that would be nice because it does yeah help with stuff like as things get more expensive and bills to pay and all that stuff but I'm not in it for that good so it's one of those like that's how I know that I'm in you're right going place. you're like you said it's already written you're already bound to go far with that mindset mm -hmm. anybody is anybody is yeah and I'll bring it up the documentary After Death by Angel Studios mm -hmm. at the very end the character that I said Kind of, we had a similar life or just a lot that was going on in our lives that were very similar. He had a chance to speak to God one on one. Like, God himself. And he said that God told him, it's all love. That's all you have to do. It's going to change the world. And what it snapped in my brain was like, that's the most simple thing ever to know but for some reason it's the hardest to do and there's a scripture in the bible obviously that talks about you must be like children to enter the kingdom of heaven and so if you take that literally of course we can't go back in the children form but children have no fear mm -hmm. and most of the times they don't actually think they just do they're very pure very loving very kind Extremely honest. <laughs> Extremely honest, but they don't—they don't mean no. it. 
out of a rude place either. Yeah, it's, it's not all out of love. It's coming all from love. a negative at all place. At because all. Because if you walk into the first person that's gonna tell you that when you walk into a room, you look beautiful or you look so nice, is gonna be a kid. Mm -hmm. First person to tell you, or the first person to <laughs> say, like, just anything like that, like, and that's just one little example, like, of being complimentary, because mm -hmm. like we said earlier, like, the kindness is free, but a lot of times it's difficult for people to kind of focus on things other than themselves, and I do it too, like, I'm so busy all the time and so concerned with what's going on in my life and everything, but if... I'm doing all this and I'm so stressed out and everything that one person that takes the time out of the day to just say, hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. Like they're, um, the lady in Morsani who works in the grocery store. I saw her one I day. Her. I had so nice. Mm -hmm. Hadn't seen her all summer, all like the first couple weeks of school, whatever. The first day I saw her, I was sitting outside of the new building doing my homework and she came up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder and gave me a hug. And she said, it's so good to see you. How was your summer? How was your semester? Knew who I was. I, like, could have cried. Made my whole... And she has no idea. Like, made my whole day. I was in such a bad mood. And that little thing right there was just kind of like, it's going to be okay. Mm. So if I can take the time to remember to give that to somebody else, even if it's just, your shoes look nice. I like your hair. Mm -hmm. Like, simple things. It could truly mean the difference to anybody whoever you talk because i know for me it does mm -hmm. like for me it absolutely does no matter how small or whatever that it is because it's so easy to just think about what you're on and there's nothing wrong with that like being so focused on your own stuff there's nothing wrong with that but like even just simple holding the door for somebody so like that could huh. just like very small but you would think like some like oh that's so simple everybody holds the doors for people no they don't okay. and so even just something simple as that is like can kind make or break somebody's day mm -hmm. so like you never know what somebody else is going through at all so it's i actually have a challenge for you okay. and everybody mainly everybody but there's something that i used to do and i still kind of do it my first roommates out of college actually used to make fun of me because i did this all the time we used to take trips to Walmart and not on, it was just something that I like to do. Whenever we're walking through Walmart, if someone's wearing nice shoes, I like their shirt, I don't care what it is. I would just give compliments out. I, I, I remember you telling me that yeah, we had this conversation. I wouldn't look for it though. Yeah. It would just be something that either hits my eye or like, whoa, she's wearing an amazing dress because I'm a very creative person. I'm thinking fashion. I'm not right. thinking like, oh, she looks, no. I'm like, right. that dress is kind of cool. Like, you're you're rocking it. Like, it looks awesome. Love your earrings. I don't care what it yeah. is. And they would be like, nah, like, stop. Because I'm just, it's, mm -hmm. it, it, to them, I guess it would seem excessive. Right. But there's people that I've met off of giving compliments that I would have never known. They were like, bro, I needed that bad. Like, I, like thank you. Yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't have known. I was just telling you how I like something. You know, I'm just yeah. kind of just, just honestly just being like, kid. And even, even sometimes, too, like, there are sometimes, like, you never know what somebody's going through, or there could be like deep-rooted insecurities. I think about mm. that a lot. Because there are even photos that I look at now from like early baseball season last year that I'm like, I really thought this looked good. Look at how yellow this is. But at the time, I had been looking at it for so long that I couldn't see yeah, yeah. anything differently, mm. you know? So it's just kind of... Mm -hmm. Do you ever have those moments or you look at pictures that you probably took a little while back or whatever, and at the time, you probably didn't think it was good? But in the future you're like okay this is actually was really good like i don't know how i did that yeah there, <laughs> there are certain things because i'll save a lot of them all of my photos that i edit are in my lightroom the ones that i don't touch or don't edit at all like the bad photos i just get rid of them myself yeah. but there are even ones even if i don't like send them in or if i don't post them or anything i'll keep them for like comparison pur purposes or like future tiktok ideas whatever um and there will be some where I'm like, oh, I would never post this in a million years. I like this shot, can't figure out the editing, didn't figure out the shutter speed, like whatever it is. And, but I'll sit there and I'm like, look back a few weeks later, and I'm like, this is actually, like I could have posted this, like this was fine. Mm -hmm. But at the time I was like, oh, this looks so bad, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's almost kind of like you see it. It's like when you 
see like the worst version of yourself, like you're your own worst critic. It's so hard to like keep that separate from the photography and the like creative standpoint because I'm like, no, no, this is the one thing that I'm actually like that I feel like I can actually do well. Like I need to be my own biggest fan on this one because like I don't need the recognition mm. from somehow. Like I'm just doing it because I enjoy it and I feel like I'm good at it. So Yeah. Yeah, that's once, my that's my two cents. Once it switched for me of more of like I need the people that are in it and the people that are watching this to like this to I just want to like it so much change so much obviously came off my back so much came off my mind yeah. and just you know that flow state starts to come back a little bit you obviously go into work enjoying whatever you want 100% it doesn't yeah. seem like a task um, so the challenge for this week for everybody was wherever you're at whoever you're around just give them a compliment. It mm -hmm. goes a long way. Creatives, keep commenting, keep letting other creatives, photographers, graphic designers, videographers know how much you like their work and what you like about it. One, because it just helps them. Two, you can even send them a DM. Yeah. If like if you need help, and it's all we can help each other. Network, you're here to support each other. Exactly. You know, like there's not after a single shoot do I ever not text you a picture and I'm like Look at this. Why does this look like this? Why is this like that? Like that's like we're here to help each other, you know. So it's you probably get annoyed. I'll be no, like no, volleyball no. photos, soccer photos. I'm like, Why is this blurry? I'm only laughing because like <laughs> <laughs> because that's so true. Like I'll get a random text, and you don't have to ask though. Like, can you check this or can you look at this for me? You just send the photos, and I like know like what time yep. it is. Yeah, yeah. I'll know. Yep. Like, well, I You're know like your time. shutter speed was. What was your eye? So that one was funny. That was a soccer picture, and I was like, "Why does this look like this?" He said, "What was your eye?" So I said, "I literally can't even tell you. I don't even know." <laughs> like I had to go back through like the set and find it because it was like I literally don't even know. And you were like, "Yep, that, yep, yep." That's so funny. But sometimes, like when you look at it for so long, like I didn't even notice in the moment. That's what the photo mm. was looking like. I didn't notice it until afterwards because in the moment, I was just like involved with what I was doing. But afterwards, it was like. What was I do? Like, mm. where did this come from? I have those moments. Yeah. There's one time where I had a shoot to where in the moment I thought I was killing it. Mm -hmm. Because in the moment, depending on like lighting, I guess, <laughs> if you're outside and there's like low light shooting, you might think you're doing a good job, which the shots yeah. may still be nice. But then when you <laughs> are editing them, and you can see what they look like. That's when you see all the grain. You can see how shaky the footage actually is. Mm -hmm. What it actually looks like frame rate wise. And sometimes, I just, <laughs> like I just, I remember that specific shoot. I never sent them the video, which is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely. Did you just love that? That's like my I favorite, favorite thing. I happens. hate that because it haunts me actually just a little bit. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, give give people their props. Let people yeah. know that you are actually enjoying. What they're doing because there was a, a really close friend of mine <laughs> still close but someone that i looked up to a lot in college and i still remember this moment and they probably have no clue of it her name is tiana i call her auntie t and it's when i was helping somebody taking photos and i was doing someone's grad photos just because i rented a camera from the school i was at and I let her look at them. And she goes, Oh, yeah, you have an eye for this. Hearing her say that, I took. Oh off. my gosh. Took. I meant to bring that up earlier. Off. Took off. Yeah, it's crazy. Took off. Like with the perspective thing, because there are certain things, like in a shoot, that I will see, that you won't see, or that you'll see, that I won't see. And that truly goes, like, with the eye that you have for it. And I think. For me, a little bit, it kind of varies based on the sport. Because you can take sport photos and it'd be fine. But I feel like, at least in mine, I can see a clear difference versus when I'm taking baseball photos versus anything else. Because there's just a certain thing that I look for when I'm doing it. And so a lot of times, like, my sister said to me one time, she was like, you look like a space cadet when you're taking um baseball photos like what, I look like I'm mean, like out of it like I look like I'm in space like just looking around whatever and I said but there's a reason for that because 
I get on the baseball field, I put the camera in my hands, and I just, I look like a space cadet because I'm just looking around all the time. Uh -huh. But it's not, like, I'm, I don't look, she says I look lost. Oh. Like, I'm not lost. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking for, I see certain things, I look at it a certain way. I look for certain things that <laughs> people might not see. Mm -hmm. And so there's just a certain, like having a certain eye for it is because I know that I don't have the eye for the grad shoots. I feel like they come out okay. Or They're not cat. my favorite thing. I don't love them when I take them. Just because I don't have a whole lot of practice with it, I, d I haven't mastered it yet. There you, you go. Know? That's a good, that's a so, better attitude. I'm getting there. Yeah. I haven't mastered it yet. Barely practice it at all, but, <laughs> um, whereas like with baseball or lacrosse, I see it and I'm just like, know what I'm looking for when I go in there. So it's a lot easier for me to find it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, that's kind of having the eye for it. I meant to bring that up earlier, so that's glad you said that. I just forgot. Definitely keep going. Cause yeah. like, I remember, uh, what Zay himself, Zay the GOAT. Shout out to Zay because Zay yes. has been killing the game. Amazing. Killing the game for like a year and a half, two years. Yeah. Killing it, progressing. Power to you, bro. Killing it. Of course. It. And I remember at first, he told me, he was like, he doesn't really like taking photos. And I just kept telling him, keep practicing it. Don't ever say you can't do something. Yeah. And Brody's pictures are better than mine. <laughs> like, like, when he sets up photo shoots, I'm yeah. like, yo, how did you do that? He's like, oh, I just did this. I was just like, you know, holding this. And like, I got, like, yeah. bro, Brody is like flourishing mm -hmm. like crazy. It's awesome to see. Keep okay. going, bro. So never, never say you can't do something. Just say you can't do it yet. You know? Attitude is free. Attitude is free. I actually have a question for you because I keep looking at the Rocky thing. Do you have like a go-to song or like anthem that makes you feel like that or that you wow. like mm -hmm. plays in the background when you're doing that? Do you know? I actually do. And um, I can't think of the actual artist name. I just know it's a choir. And the song is called Nobody Knows. And the song is like seven minutes long. Oh, um, it's... It's like Pastor Elk. Yes, or something it like is. That. The song is seven minutes long. I love choir music. I love yeah. to listen to it. I grew up in... I grew up in the Baptist church mm -hmm. where most of the praise and worship is choir. So hearing that, obviously, loving music, I like to listen to the different... Like how spacious the music is and whatnot. How spacious the different voices are. If, you know, I like the key turn, like paratone and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I love that song because of the lyrics as well and how it sounds. So it goes like, nobody knows all the sorrows. Nobody knows all the trouble I've seen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And it keeps going in further where the pastor talks about stuff. It's like, I've seen, like it just sings. Yeah. And, but to me, it's amazing. Just because exactly of what it's saying. Nobody knows all the things that anybody goes through but God. That's it. So if you want advice on anything, why don't you ask him? He knows one, he knows your heart. Two, he knows what's ahead of you, he knows what's behind you, he knows you, he created you. Continue to ask him everything. And of course while you're going through certain things that you may not understand, he already fully understands why you're going through it. So that song brings me a lot of peace, brings me a lot of triumph, brings me a lot of victory because he's the only person who has seen what I've been crying on the floor. Yeah. When I've, he's seen my suicidal moments. He's seen when I've been at my lowest. He's seen when I'm at my highest, you know what I mean? Like, so that song just continues to remind me of like, one, God has already won. Mm. And like, it kind of puts me back in the mental state of Focusing on things that are above and out of this world, and so Big picture. that I literally just boom. So that's your that's your rocky Bow. rocky moment. I'm that's good. Your moment. I'm straight. That's my victory lap right that's there. Your... Take your victory lap. You know he puts his hands up, runs around the ring. Rejoice. No matter what is going on in life, nobody knows but God. Nice. Take that victory lap. I like that. Cool. I was just wondering because usually like. Being visual, I feel like lots of visuals like that come with audio. Wait That's why when they added music to putting on Instagram pictures, 
love that. Yeah. I love partnering those two things together. Because um, again, sets the emotion. Sets the emotion. But yeah, I was wondering what your anthem was. So. All good? Sweet. Cool.